Here we're looking at the PlayStation 2, which was Sony's flagship games console from between the year 2000 and 2006. However, if you were in Europe and you were to ask Sony what this was in that time period, they would claim that it wasn't a games console and was in fact a home computer. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take a look at why they did that and how they somehow convinced or attempted to convince the courts in Europe that this was actually a computer and not a games console. Back when Sony were launching the PlayStation 2, there was a 2.2% tax in Europe for games consoles. However, this did not apply to home computers. This meant that when Sony tried to launch the PlayStation 2, they desperately tried to convince the courts that it was in fact a computer, so they didn't have to pay this tax. So how did they do that? Well, many people seem to speculate that they did that by launching the official Linux kit, which I've done a video of previously. However, in fact they didn't. This wasn't included with the PlayStation 2, so you couldn't really argue that the PlayStation 2 was a computer if it didn't include the software that they claimed made it a computer. Also, this was launched in 2002, so it was launched after the PlayStation 2 was initially released in Europe. So there was something earlier than this that they used to try and convince the courts. And that was this disc here. So this is the PlayStation 2 demo disc from the year 2000. And this is a European version. I don't know if this disc was a disc like this was included with consoles in other countries, but this was definitely included with all the models sold in the EU in an attempt to convince the courts that it was a computer. So let's take a look at what's on this disc and why they claim that makes it a computer. So here's a listing of what's on this demo disc. So you get three playable demos, which are just cut down games, Wild Wild Racing, FIFA 2001, and SSX Snowboarding. There was then some videos, which were sort of demo videos really to show the PlayStation, because obviously it had DVD playback capabilities, so that was a big feature of it. But then you get these two extras. You get Find My Own Way, which is a graphics demo, but then the key thing that they used to insist it was a computer was this. Yeah, basic programming software. So this, uh, so yeah, basic. It still exists today. It's an sort of I think open source implementation of the basic programming language, much like the sort of style you'd have had back on microcomputers back in the eighties. And it's sort of been kept up to date, and there's it's actually quite f sort of fully featured nowadays. And that's what this is. So Sony ported that to the PlayStation Two and included it on this demo disc, so that they could try and convince the courts that it was a computer because it could be programmed by the user. So, yeah, that was Sony's attempt. So in this video, what we'll do is we'll stick this disc in, fire it up, and take a look at Yeah Basic running on the PlayStation 2. So now here we have a PlayStation hooked up, ready to take a look at it. I'm just using the slim version. It's just because my original PlayStation 2, the fat one, which this disc came with, it's getting a bit old and the disc tray is getting a bit worn out, so I don't want to really keep stressing it. So I may as well use the slim one because it's a bit more sort of rugged and it was easier for me to get out. So... Let's put the disc in and fire it up. So, there it is there. Here we've got the original demo disc that came with the fat PlayStation 2. I'm not sure if they ever stopped supplying this with PlayStation 2s or they continued doing it throughout its lifespan. But there's a disc there. And on the bottom it's a sort of purple design. Let's put this in and fire it up. Here we have some state-of-the-art graphics, <laughs> demonstrating it. So just press X to skip that demo. And here it's saying it's the preview levels are taken from games still in development. That's because this disc was obviously released way before, like, along with the console, so the games hadn't even been finished by the time this game was, this disc was developed. So now we've got this menu system, so there's all the demo games. You've got FIFA, SSX, snowboarding, all that stuff. We're not going to take a look at those. What we're interested in is here. And that is Yeah Basic, which... A bit tricky to select, there we go. So that's it there, so now let's go in and take a look at the programming environment for the PlayStation 2. Loading up, press X to play. <laughs> so you're playing it. Here it's doing this, so that's it now coming up. Yes. 
and there we go, we are now in. So as you can see here, it's talking about the input devices. So you can either use the standard DualShock controller or you can use a USB keyboard. So I'm obviously going to use a keyboard because using a controller to program on an on-screen keyboard would be absolutely horrific. Um, I remember back in the day using this as a DVD player and controlling the DVD player with the, the controller was bad enough. I can't, can't imagine trying to like type on an on-screen keyboard. But yeah, you can actually use the controller to do this if you wanted to. And I suppose they kind of had to because if they're desperately trying to convince them that it's a computer, you have to be able to take the whole thing out of the box and just use it as a computer and not have to buy the additional software or buy an additional keyboard for it. So here I've got a USB keyboard. A bit of an oversized one, but it'll, it'll do. <laughs> and we can plug it into the console. And because people keep asking every time I show a keyboard like this on video, this is a Unicomp Classic. It's effectively a modern day version of the IBM Model M with a USB interface. So that's what this keyboard is given. People quite often ask about it. So now let's go in a bit closer and take a look at Yeah Basic. So now let's take a look at this running. So I have played about with it a little bit, so I've sort of got a bit more used to the controls. They are sort of detailed here. It's a little bit fiddly, but it's not too bad. So along the bottom, you've got almost these tabs. So you've got the reference tab, which is all the documentation, and then three documents. So you can have three programs on the go at once, and then text and graphics, which I'm not really sure what they do. I think that's, I'm guessing that's maybe, the, I think that's like the output of your program. So if your program's outputting graphics, it'd be visible on that tab there, sort of thing. And then to switch between them, as you're seeing I'm doing, you use the function keys. So f one's reference, f is the first program, and it cycles through them like that. It's actually quite a quick interface to use, it's quite easy. And they do have all the documentation built in, so if you did have this, you could you know, go out the box and just learn it. And in some ways it's almost annoying that I didn't discover this when I was younger, because I've had a PlayStation 2 since, ve since the early 2000s, since fairly shortly after it launched I think I got it. And if I'd found this when I was younger, I'd have loved it, but I just never knew it existed. I thought, oh it's a boring demo disc, and chucked it in a corner and never used it. So when you're on a tab, like the reference tab, pressing escape pulls up this menu, and this lists various things. So in here we can go through and we can pick what we want. So for example, if I want to learn about the, I don't know, decision-making operations, I can go into that, hit enter, and it pulls up documentation with you know, example code, which you can actually highlight and then copy with control C and then paste into a, co a program. So you can go through here and you can see all these examples of how it works. And documentation is fairly comprehensive. Like I've never used Java Basic before as a programming language and I was able to literally just write a program, which I'll show you later, just using the documentation here. I mean, it's not the most complicated program in the world, but these references, this reference guide was quite quick just to look up for things I didn't know. So now let's take a look at some of this. So, obviously it's a programming language, we're not going to do a tutorial on it or anything, but we can take a look at it because it's got some demos built in. So if we go to the first program here, I press escape, this comes up. So we can go through here and we can go to load page. Now, as you can see here, it's throwing an error. That's because you can save your code to memory cards. So you could have a memory card in the machine, write programs, save them to the card and load them back. So back in the day, this could have been quite fun for making your own little games for it. However, we can go to built-in sample code and here's some examples. So we'll go through these one by one and take a quick look. So here's Fountain, which we can load up there as the code. Obviously, I'm not gonna go through the code in too much detail, but that's it there. And we can run it and it's probably coming across really badly on camera because it's really dark. Effectively, it's like a sort of fountain of little particles spraying up from the bottom of the screen, but it is incredibly dark, so yeah, it's not actually really that visible. It, well, there you can sort of see a bit of what it looked like. It was sort of animated like that, but it was just really dark. So for other demos, which might be a bit more easy to see, we have blobs. Let's see what this is. There we go. So it's yeah, it's, it's blobs moving around the screen. So you can do quite cool graphical stuff with this. It's very much a sort of idea of like 90s style screensavers. <laughs> Next we have Fractal. This is quite a cool demo of it. So we run that. And it'll render a Mandelbrot set. This takes a wee while obviously because it's quite computationally intensive. But you can see it's slowly scrolling down the screen there.
And there we go. After several minutes, we have now rendered a Mandelbrot set on the PlayStation 2. The things you never think you'd really do on a PlayStation 2, but yep, that's another demo. And it is quite slow. <laughs> So, next demo, we have a cube, which we'll take a look at. There we go, it's a pretty nicely rendered 3D cube. It actually it reminds me of the old um, Win like Windows 95, 98 3D flower box um, screensaver, if it actually did more than just being a cube. Yeah, it's quite pretty smooth motion, it seems pretty decent. Ball. Let's take a look at that. There you go, that's running a little bit slower, it's obviously a bit more complicated, but you've got sort of pretty accurate sort of graphics there and fairly accurate sort of bouncing physics type things. And actually yeah, there's light on it as well, so it's got like, yeah, proper appropriate lighting sets. That's pretty cool. Next up, we will see what we've got next. Go to page. And we have worms, let's see this. Oh yeah, this was a cool one. So this is actually a game of Snake. So this is, that, this is a, the other ones are just sort of graphic demos, whereas this is actually a full game. Now it takes, does take quite a while to run, to load, but now it's loaded. We need to press X on the actual controller, and there we go. Oh. Okay, so this one actually wants to use the controller itself, where you've got this game of Snake. And I'm, oh, it's quite fast, so it's a bit tricky to do. Yeah, this controller is a bit dodgy as well, but because it's a program, we can actually adjust the speed. So I think if I remember correctly, actually increasing this number makes it run slower because it's like a time delay, I think. Like it's a time interval between something. So that should hopefully slow it down now. There we go, so that's now a bit slower and more playable. There we go, this actually works. So we now have Snake on a PlayStation 2 that I've just crashed again. And if you take a look through this code, you've got all the code for the main game here. But then if you go further down, page down work, a page down works, there we go. You can see here we have the level, levels. So here's where they're defining the levels. So that's level one, which just has a border around it. But we can see other levels, like level two, has these obstacles in the middle where there's the ones and they get even more advanced as you go on level 5, level 6 so it gets quite complicated so what I'll now do is we'll take like another level for a laugh so we can see here it restores on level 1 so we'll just go to level two, uh, level 6 I think it was going to be just take a look at the final level in this And there we go. Oh, that was a bit harder. Straight into a wall. Oh, this is... This controller's also really worn out. <laughs> ah, I think I see what I've done here. By making it run slower, it runs slower now, but you have to hold the buttons down longer for them to respond, which makes it trickier to control. Ah, my, my cheating wasn't overly successful. There we go, that is Snake on a PlayStation 2, written in Yabasic. So what I think we'll look at now is a program that I wrote myself. It is not nearly as fancy as any of this, but just to demonstrate you can actually write your own programs on this. So we'll go to a new document, um, there we go, and we'll type it in. So now here's the demo program I wrote. It's very simple, but it's a sort of higher or lower number guessing game. So, quick run through the code, so it's really not fancy, but at the top we pick a random number between 0 and 100. You have to sort of do casting to an integer here because the random number returns a floating point. And then we've got a repeat until loop, so just until the person guesses correctly. We ask them to enter a number. If their guess is too high, we say it's too high. If the guess is too low, we say it's too low, and if it's correct, they win. It's very simple. But actually the editor for this isn't too bad, but you can, for example, you can pick that there, you can hold shift to highlight text, you can copy, you can paste. It actually, like, like even like, 
even things like shift, like home end work, shift home selects whole line. So it was actually not painful at all typing code in on this, which was quite nice. So there's a the code, so let's run my game effectively. So run program, enter a number, too low, set five. Pretty much just binary search these games, it's not that hard. Um, too high, 80, too low, 82, too low, 83. There we go. That was very simple, but that is my own game I quickly threw together in Yeah Basic. Not bad for probably about 10 minutes work and being able to actually look up the reference guide to understand how the language works. And now for a bit of a laugh, I've installed YaBasic on my laptop and I've implemented the, I've just copied the Fractal program from this onto my laptop. So we're going to run them side by side and just see the sheer performance difference between the two. Obviously I'm not remotely surprised that a modern day Haspel laptop is significantly faster than a PlayStation 2 but it's quite fun to see them side by side. The only thing is I couldn't get the set RGB command to work on the laptop, it just didn't seem to exist. So I'm, I think that's maybe PlayStation 2 specific. So I've changed both of them to be the same, so you'll get the same thing, but it just won't be in colour. It'll just be a black and white diagram. But there we go, so that's the laptop ready to run it, and the PlayStation ready to run, so let's start them both at the same time and time the difference. And there you go, that is quite a performance difference between the two. Obviously I'm not expect I'm not surprised, but yep, there you go. That's a demonstration of the same program running in Yeah Basic on a PlayStation 2 as compared to a modern laptop. So there you have it. That was a look at the Yeah Basic programming language that Sony included with all European PlayStation 2s on the demo disc in an attempt to classify it as a home computer. However, after five years, Sony lost their court case in 2006 and the European Commission came out and said that no, nope, it is a, vi a video games console, not a home computer. And it's reported that Sony therefore lost out on £34.2 million worth of rebate. So what I'm getting from that is they obviously were paying the tax as they were going through the court, and if it had been classed as a computer in the end, they would have got a rebate for it. But ultimately, the court said, nope, bundling a copy of BASIC with it doesn't make it a computer, which... I tend to agree with, um, and therefore charge tax on it. So, yep, that was a look at another sort of little oddity that many people probably didn't even think about. Be interested to know also how many people had PlayStation 2, like, especially people watching this, bought PlayStation 2s in Europe, got these demo discs with it. How many out of those people actually knew even had this on it? And it'd also be interesting to hear stories of people that actually, you know, used Jabasic and built their own little games in it. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching.